In today's video, I'm going to share with you all of the brand new updates that are available in Premiere Pro starting today. And if you want to get 15% off your Adobe Creative Cloud plan, you can sign up to become a Super Peer subscriber. The link is just down below. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. If you're in the middle of a project and you don't want to update to the latest version just yet, remember that you can download the public beta to access all the updates, which is available from the Adobe Creative Cloud app. I'm talking to you. Are you talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. So the first update is inner and outer strokes. Now you might be like, isn't that like a basic thing? Shouldn't it already have that? Yes. And yes, it should have already been in here. It was in the legacy titler tool, but they've now added it to the essential graphics panel. Let me show you how it works. So let's go to the type tool and let's type out big title. And then I'm going to make sure that it's center aligned horizontally and vertically. So next, let's say you want to add a stroke. So let's go ahead and check on the stroke here. And now you will see that we have three options, outer, inner, and center. If you've previously used the stroke tool to create mogurts in Premiere Pro, it will always default to the center one, but you can always change this now going forward. So let's change the color fill. Let's select the color. And then from the drop down here, I'll select linear gradient and press OK. And right now you can see that it's outer, but what if we want to make it inner? And then now you can see that the gradient is on the inside of the font line. In this case, I'll use outer and increase this up a bit. And also, if you want to add a second stroke, we can click on this plus icon. And in this case, let's make it a black solid. And then this time I'm going to make it inner and reduce it down. So it pops a little bit more on the inside. So using these new stroke controls, we can really make some cool kind of comic and more animated titles. You can see here on this title that I added the film impact text animator to the beginning and to the end. So that way we have a quick little animation. One more thing about this new stroke tools is you'll notice next to the fill, the eyedropper tool is now here right next to the fill. It used to be on the right side, which was kind of annoying because you'd have to click and move your mouse all the way over to change the color. Well, now you can just select right next to it to use the dropper tool if you wanna select a color. So the next update is multiple selections and being able to change, for example, the fill of multiple titles that you have in the timeline. I have the big text, I have a lower third, and I have a subscribe button. What I can do now, if I want to change the color of the fill to all of them, I can click and last one select all three of them. And then from the fill controls here, I can select this and change it to like a lime hot green, for example. And now all three of them will have this green inside of them. If you wanted to change the stroke fill, you can click this and make updates to the stroke. One piece of feedback here I had for the Premiere Pro team is let's say we just wanted to copy the stroke fill. Right now, if we control click or right click on this and copy this and then go over to this one and control click or right click and select paste attributes, we can't paste just the shadow or we can't paste just the stroke, right? So being able to copy and paste style attributes to other text layers inside of our timeline, that would be something great to have in the future. So the next update has to do with alignment. So here inside of this sequence, I have typed out first, second, and third. And you can see it's all on the same layer and you can see here from Essential Graphics that each text has its own layer. So with them selected, now you can see we have a new dropdown. Now here, if we select Align Bottom, this will align the first and the second to where the third bottom is. So now it's all in the same line. The next thing that we can do that's a new update is we can choose Align to Video Frame as Group, which is the new one. So now we can align center horizontally and we can also align vertically and they're not gonna smush together like they used to before. If I choose align to selection and choose align vertically and horizontally, it's all going to mush together. If we use align to video frame as group, now when we choose align horizontally and align vertically, they still remain separately apart. And we can use the distribute tools to distribute the space horizontally so that way it's evenly spaced out from the video frame. So while you may not use this very often, if you do have multiple text layers that you need to distribute evenly and align horizontally and vertically, you can now use that new dropdown. And notice that it's not there unless we have multiple text layers selected. 
see how it appears. So now the essential graphics panel is responsive to what we have selected. So certain controls will disappear if it's not necessary for what we're doing. And by the way, I'm Kelsey. If this video is helping you out, be sure to give it a big thumbs up as well as subscribe. And also come hang out with me live on Super Peer. Each month I do live workshops where we go deep into a topic and you can get your questions answered live. So go to superpeer.com slash gal. You can go check out the perks of the community page, book a one-on-one -on -one, or register for an upcoming monthly workshop. Also a special thanks to my friends over at Motion Can for sponsoring today's video. As you know, the graphics pack is my go-to pack for all my pop-up title animations in my videos. It has over 2,250 elements nicely organized here inside of this panel where you can go in and you can preview all of these different categories such as kinetic posters, social media, text messages, there's so much inside of this pack. And the best part is, is that everything is responsive and some of the elements, including the transitions, come with sound effects built in. So if you click on one of these transitions and select apply, it imports as a motion graphics template. So if I select this transition and go to essential graphics, I'll be able to customize the colors here and the scene width and the scene height. So the graphics pack for Premiere Pro is available for purchase from Envato Market. And if you use my link below, it helps support the channel. Now, despite what it says on the Envato Market website, a regular license can be used in multiple videos for social media as well as commercial projects. But if you do use it for TV or broadcast, you need to choose the extended license or for like streaming platforms like Netflix or Apple TV, any product that requires the end user to be able to pay to view, that's when you need the extended license and you only need to buy this once. So all the details just down below. And if you want a sampler pack of 80 free elements from this bigger pack, I've also put a link to that below. All right, let's go ahead and jump back into the updates. And talking about Mogurts from the Motion Can graphics pack and this new update, now there's multi-frame rendering that's migrated over into your Mogurt. So it's now two times as fast to use Mogurts that were designed in After Effects. Because as you might know, After Effects in the last release, it now has multi-frame rendering. So it's super fast and much faster than the rendering in Premiere Pro. And before it didn't bring over that multi-frame rendering in the Mogurt, but now it is available. Let's show you how fast it is. So from the Motion Can Graphics Pack, I'm going to apply this social media motion graphics template. And you can see it imports really wicked fast into my timeline. And one of the great things about working with these motion graphics templates is that they're responsive to time. So this out animation here, if I just click the the end of this Mogurt and drag it in, that out animation is moved with it. So it's really well designed. Now let's say I want to render this out and this transition too. I'm just going to press enter on my keyboard and it's going to use the multi-frame rendering to render out these motion graphics templates pretty fast. And just like that, it's done rendering. So while it may perform two times faster for some of you, remember it also depends on your hardware. I have 64 gigabytes of RAM on the M1 Max. It performs pretty great because it's a newer piece of hardware. If you have an older piece of hardware, you may still experience a bit of lag when it comes to Mogurts, but hopefully, it is faster. And there's another update to masking that was actually available before and I didn't know about this, but it turns out if you want to animate text with mask, it's a lot easier than you think. So here inside of my sequence, I have the big text that I had in the beginning. Let's say we want to create a rectangle mask for the text to animate up out of. So what I can do is click on this rectangle tool and I can click and create a rectangle around the text. And then what I can do is select this shape from the essential graphics panel and mask with shape. And now this mask becomes transparent, but we can still see the rectangle outline. So what we can do is just move this up so it sits just beneath the text. So let's say we want the text off of the mask so it's invisible and to animate up. What we can do here is go to effect controls. Instead of animating the mask shape that we just created, we can animate the text. So from the text layer, we can go to position and let's say we want it to end up here as our final point, we can hit toggle animation to create our first keyframe. And then we can pull back to the beginning and use the vertical parameter here to move this down and see how it disappears behind the mask. So now it just animates up behind this mask and we can make it a little bit faster, control click and change it to ease in. 
So now it just moves up. So now you can start creating shape mask and animate and it's just so much easier and I didn't know about it, but it's it's fairly new. So hopefully that is useful to you. So a few updates ago, Adobe announced that they now integrate Frame.io inside of Premiere Pro because you know they bought Frame.io and it's now an Adobe company. So now from the workspaces, if you go to review, you have the Frame.io and you get a free Frame.io account with your Adobe ID. So you get up to hundred gigabytes free and you can always add more storage. But typically with Frame.io, the way that I used it is with my editors, when we have a project that's finished and ready for review, you just upload your timeline by going upload and you can upload your current active sequence and get feedback to make edits. But now Adobe has announced a new camera to cloud tool that's really designed for teams that have quick turnarounds. Instead of just for review of the final product, now there's camera to cloud where if you're on a set, you can have your camera upload the footage to Frame.io automatically so that way the editor can get it right away. Now it is limited right now in terms of certain hardware that enables you to upload directly to Frame.io. Before we were using DV tapes and other types of tapes to record and now we're primarily on internal storage or SD cards or recording directly to a hard drive. But in the future, we may just all be recording and have our cameras automatically send it to the cloud and grab our footage from the cloud always. And lastly, the legacy titler tool is no longer available in this new version. So if you've had some saved presets with legacy titler tool, it's time now to move completely over to the essential graphics panel. So those are all the fall updates to Premiere Pro. Let me know what you think good, bad? Was there anything that you were hoping to see? Anything that's very useful? I know for myself in the future, I would love to be able to add transitions and animations to captions. And I have notified the Premiere Pro team about this. So they are aware of my request and hopefully that will be coming soon because I know making dynamic captions, especially for social media is so important. So I look forward to seeing your comments just down below. And yeah, Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully it was useful. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Ooh.